The Eiffel Protocol for Continuous Integration and Delivery puts a great deal of emphasis on traceability. But what do we mean by traceability, and why is it important? Traceability, when you boil it right down, is the ability to link one engineering artifact to another, typically with directed and semantic links. An engineering artifact is anything created in the R&D process. A source revision, a piece of documentation, a test, a test result, a requirement, a binary, anything. Semantic means the link has a specific meaning. In other words, the link doesn't just tell you that two engineering artifacts are related, it also tells you how they are related. And finally, directed means that the link has an explicit direction. It will tell you that it's the test case that verifies the requirement, not the requirement verifying the test case. Why is it important then? Traditionally, traceability has mostly been about complying with various regulations, and to some extent to document product revisions. In other words, the needs to be able to show both regulators and customers what exactly changed in this new version of the software, who changed it, why they changed it, and how it was tested, etc. There are different methods of establishing that traceability. In what you might think of as the traditional method, it's done manually and in retrospect. It's time to release the software, so we put together a bunch of people who play detective for a few weeks, pulling in the necessary information by scouring spreadsheets and project plans and asking around, and then write up the necessary documents. Apart from the obvious, there are several problems with this approach. One is that it is completely incompatible with continuous integration and delivery. If continuous integration means that every day every developer commits at least once, and continuous delivery means that every change is considered a release candidate to be evaluated and potentially released or deployed, then that means we must be ready to satisfy any traceability requirements for every change we make, and not a few weeks down the line, but right now. Another problem is that adequate traceability can be used for so much more. If we do keep track of everything that happens in the pipeline in real time, and how it relates to everything else, we can feed that information back to the development process. We can tell the developer what happened to our change, where it was integrated, if it was tested okay, not just in her component, but anywhere in the ecosystem. We can show what the throughput is, we can identify bottlenecks, we can show where in the pipeline a bug fix is, all in real time. And we can make decisions automated decisions in real time, such as selecting the most relevant test cases to execute at any particular time. Not just based on the source code, but by analyzing who made which change where and why, which tests tend to fail in similar situations, which tests have been executed recently, failed recently, failed uniquely or in clusters, and in which environments. And in the end, all of this boils down to traceability which, when you think about it, is just another word for knowing what the heck is going on. And that's what Eiffel is all about. The way it does that is by broadcasting events, declaring that something happened. These events represent and identify engineering artifacts. For instance, Eiffel source change created event says exactly that. A change to source code has been created. It then points to the relevant revision, any issues it addresses, previous versions, and baselines. These references are the trace links of traceability. To illustrate the point, let's take a very simple example. An Eiffel artifact created event declares that an artifact has been built. It references other events to declare the environment in which it was built and the composition it was built from. The composition in turn identifies its elements such as other artifacts or source changes. With this information alone, we can already answer a number of the traceability questions we started out with. The Eiffel vocabulary is much richer, however, but it's designed to let you start out small, cherry pick the pieces that you need, and take your time to grow into the full vocabulary. To learn more about the Eiffel vocabulary, its syntax implementations and use cases, visit us at GitHub.